Hey you and welcome to my channel. My name is Tina and my aim is to improve your drawings just like others have done for me when I just started out. In this week's video I want to try something new. I want to create a couple of pieces just using the three primary colors black and white in Pan Pastel for the underlayer. For the details I'm only using the Stabilo Carbotello set of pastel pencils. Let's see what we can create with these limited amount of supplies and I hope to be able to show you that you don't need all of these expensive supplies and different brands to create something beautiful. That said, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to do so now. That way you won't miss out on any of these videos and you are doing me a great favor by helping my channel grow. These pieces will be great for the ones amongst you that are just wanting to try out pastels and are not yet sure if you want to invest in a lot of expensive supplies just yet. So let's get on with it. As I've said, I'm only using the three base colors and a black and white pan pastel for the underlayer. You will have to mix a lot, but this will help you again with getting to know colors and how to mix the one you need by using the very basics. Pan pastel pans last quite a long time, so you can be sure to make some pieces before needing to buy new ones. As for me, I use a blank sheet of regular printer paper to mix my colors on. This way I can see what color I'm creating and will be using before putting it down onto my pastel matte paper. I look closely at my reference picture and try to create the colors I need as closely to the reference as I can get them. I have only used one soft tool that's double F for this one as I wanted to keep the cost very low for you. If you take care of these sponges, you can use them for multiple drawings. Just don't put too much pressure on them, as they will tear otherwise. Rinse them with regular dish soap and water when you are done, let them dry and they are as good as new for your next piece. Now back to the drawing, by now you've seen me add the underlayer using the pan pastels. Always make sure that your underlayer is a little bit darker than you want your end result to be. This way, when you go over with lighter pencils, this will clearly show and you will be able to add multiple layers going from dark to light. I first added in these darker hairs on all of the orangey fur. These resemble the fur underneath the top fur. You can always see some darker hairs underneath, so I have added these in to make the fur look more realistic. From that point forward, I will layer lighter fur on top. You can still see the layers below through my top layer, this gives it way more depth. If you have watched any of my other tutorials, you should know by now that I just love to blur everything just a little using my finger. So of course this piece was no exception to that. And after every layer of fur I added, I went over it with my finger to smoothen things out just a little. As the orange fur was getting to a stage that I liked, I noticed that it needed to be just a little more of that warm orangey red tone. So I went over with a pastel pencil to give it that warmer feeling that I was looking for. And when I was happy with how this looked, I thought it was time to focus on the white fur above the eyes and on the side of the face. I started by getting in some darker hairs at the bottom of the eyebrow spots to give it some shadow feeling. I've added a magenta color to get in some hairs at the top of the eyebrows and on the spots just above his eyes. These are a little more muted and not as white, so I made sure to keep them a little more toned down than the eyebrow ones. The magenta might seem like an odd color to use, but you'll see that in the end result this actually gives it a lot more depth and interest to them. After all of this was done, I picked up a very light grey and went over all of the spots to add some white looking hair. Make sure not to add too many on the lower spots though, as you want to keep these more muted. And to finish these spots off, I went over them at the side with the orangey brown pencil to get some overlapping hairs and make them blend in with the rest of the fur. Lastly, adding some darker hairs again to resemble the lower laying fur. And of course, I couldn't help myself and decided to add this color some more around the rest of the fur. But not too much though. It still has to look natural. I decided to work on the white fur at the side of the face next. This was pretty much done like the eyebrow spots, just a little less in focus. So I didn't add the darker value and I didn't add the magenta color. Here I simply picked out some hairs that I wanted to accentuate and give the impression of bushy white fur. As I was doing this, I decided to finish the orange fur on top of the head as well. I simply added in the final highlights all over the top of the head to call it finished. Make sure you don't add these too close together so you can still see the fur underneath them. To finish the size of the face off, overlap some of the orange fur on top of the white fur to make it blend in with the rest of the face again. 
Next up for me are the eyes, as I don't want them to be empty when the fur around them is complete. So I started with a warm brown color to fill in the base color of the eyes and went over that with a darker brown, just leaving the area around the pupil lighter. Then filling in the pupil with plain black and blending this all out with a blending stump. I felt like the brown wasn't warm enough so I added this orangey red color to give it some more warmth in the middle of the eye, just around the pupil. After blending this out it looked much more like the color I wanted it to, but the eye was still way too bright and dull so I added some black around it to give it a sense of depth. Blending this out it seemed way more realistic already. Then adjusting the colors as I go with some more brown or black and adding in the highlights in the eyes as well. This makes the eyes look glassy and wet and give it that really realistic look that we're going for. Last but not least, we need to get in the dark skin around the eye as well, which is reflecting some light from the surroundings. So make sure to look at your reference picture for this and add the colors you see on there. For this one it was magenta and a little bit of blue. After adding these in, you can see that it kind of looks like he's alive now. At least for me it does. It's time for the little snout of this cute little panda. I mean, these guys are really cute. Just look them up on YouTube playing or kind of fighting with each other. They look adorable, standing on their back legs with their paws up in the air. Anyway, I started out here with a very dark purple color to get in these little darker hairs that you can see beneath the white ones. These are found on some spots on the snout, like at the whiskers for example. Make sure you look at your reference for where these go and add them in. And as we've done with the rest of the fur so far, we'll go from dark to light, so adding lighter layers of fur on top of each other here. One thing to keep in mind is that you don't want the fur going in the exact same direction and the same length all over. This will make your piece look very robotic and fake. Just make some wavy fur on top of another and it will look much more real. As I went over it with the lighter fur, I noticed that my darker parts at the sides weren't quite dark enough. So I've added some darker green at the sides to make it look like this reflected the bush or tree this guy was sitting in. And next up his little tongue sticking out. I'm not giving this too much attention as I don't want it to be in focus, just making it a lot darker as it was catching way too much attention right now. Time for the centerpiece of this snout, his little nose. I just added in the base colors first as I didn't quite go dark enough with my pond pastels. No biggie, I'll just add some pencils over the top, blending this carefully with my trusty blending stump. Once I was happy with the darkness, I started adding in the highlights, the reflective wet parts of the nose. These are my favorite thing since they just make it all look wet and realistic, like you can boop that little nose. I work from dark to light again, making the lighter layers smaller than the ones underneath, so it looks like the top of the nose is the wettest part. Glazing some colors over the small dots I've added to adjust the overall color to a purple blue kind of color. This gives it a lot more interest than a regular black nose. Decided that the tongue wasn't dark enough yet, so just adding some darker colors again and blending this out. As for the finishing touch, we still have to give our little guy some whiskers. I simply copy the ones on my reference picture for this, although they don't have to be an exact copy. Just don't make them these straight lines that all grow in the same direction or you'll end up with a very boring looking panda. After the whiskers are in, I'm going over the piece one more time to adjust some things here and there and adding the final highlights on the snout. After all of that, I think I'm ready to call this one finished. I hope you liked this video, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate your support as this helps to grow my channel and reach other people just like yourself. Hope to see you again next Friday and in the meantime, have a great week.